without death, there's no evolution, uh, as, at least as far as we know it. Uh, one could hypothesize some organism that might live forever that would you know, butt off mutations. Uh, but it, it, evolution as it works now operates by organisms uh, dying and the next generations uh, carry on. And those generations, uh, for the most part, have, vari have variants in them. And then those variants are selected. And so you can get a, uh, you can get a, a sort of design happening out of evolution over time, or you can get adaptations occurring uh, that did not exist. So for example, uh, at one point there were no uh, large creatures such as us or elephants or dinosaurs or amphibians walking around on land. Uh, there were vertebrates called fish in the world's oceans and then they were able to emerge and go up on land. The only way that could happen would be many generations dying, many gener generations of fish with certain kinds of limbs dying and there were slow variations accumulating to turn those fish into tetrapods, four-legged creatures that would either be in the mud in the shallow water and eventually crawl up out of the ocean. So, so death has really been essential, an essential ingredient to the evolutionary process. Cells are dying in our bodies all the time. The rates that they die and are replaced varies depending on what organ uh, we're looking at. So for example, the, the skin, the cells in the skin are turned over uh, approximately every month of time your skin is migrating, new cells are migrating outward and the old cells are sloughed off. And that makes some sense. The skin is subject to a lot of wear and tear and abrasion. It's, it's in contact with, the, with a harsh environment. And so for the skin to have some kind of way to renew itself is very essential to having a, a border around our bodies. Uh, organs such as the brain and the heart, uh, the cells there, uh, many of those cells uh, either uh, aren't intended to die. They don't really have turnover. In some parts of the brain it's being discovered the cells do have turnover, but clearly the places such as the brain and the heart in which the interconnectivity of the cells and the cells working together is, is really crucial. Uh, in those organs the turnover is a lot less. So the body through the evolutionary process has tuned uh, death in a, a kind of adaptive manner to to ensure that these organs are, are, are healthy depending on what, what function these organs uh, have to play. There's also a role of death in development that all uh, large creatures we know have. Uh, the, the, a really good example is, is our hand with our five fingers. The fingers do not grow as stems of a tree might grow in which they start small and they just, they just grow outward. You might think that that happens, that they're starting, they, of course they're small when they're in, in the womb, but instead the hand starts off more like a paddle, kind of like a, a thick, uh, um, very thick ping pong paddle. And the fingers in this embryonic stage are formed by the cells in between uh, dying off. So the finger, the, the first extension of the fingers are formed by by a developmental form of death. It's a program death. This, this is uh, death being controlled. It's not just the turnover that I described later uh, earlier of the, of the skin uh, turning over, but these cells die in between. And they don't, they don't die and then fall away. They, they die and are, they're reabsorbed uh, in, into the hand, and so it's a form of recycling. But the, the formation of the hand, and this is true of the human hand, the mouse hand, uh, there, there's many examples of this. And if, if there is not uh, controlled, what's called programmed cell death, very precisely sculpting the, the, the developing uh, organism. Uh, it's been shown that these organisms can die, that death is absolutely essential in the early developmental process. One thing I write about is the fact that there's not just one death. There, there's, there's different forms of death. There, there's, there's the death of our bodies that has to do with the senescence of us being a large multicellular creature, uh, a metazoan, uh, having to do with the slowing down of the repair mechanisms. Uh, but there's also a lot of death inside our bodies as we live. Uh, the death of our cells, skin cells are always sloughing off, uh, in, internal cells are dying, cells that go aberrant go through a kind of a suicide program. So there's a lot of death inside our bodies all the time. 
going on that is essential to our, our life. And uh, this is somewhat of a different death from the, from the death of our bodies as, as large organisms. Uh, and then there's also death on smaller scales in bacteria uh, that, that either have to do with the running out of nutrients that's, that, that is a, an inadvertent form of death, uh, but there's also kinds of bacteria which, which are uh, multicellular and they, they can have programmed cell death in there as when they go into the reproductive phases. Uh, so, so, so one issue about death that I find particularly fascinating is that there is not just uh, one kind of death, but death has been really incorporated uh, into life in various forms depending on what scale of nature we're looking at.